Can you make a kid-friendly robot for under $10? This Bristlebot says yes. Getting into robotics can be pretty daunting, but there is a way to do it cheaply, with simple tools and only a minimal knowledge of electronics. Enter the Bristlebot. It works so well because of its secret weapon, a toothbrush. These decorations help too. So how do you make one? Let's rewind the clock and see how I did it. To build a Bristlebot, you'll need the following components. Let's start with the battery holder. You want one that holds two AAAs and preferably one that has a switch on the top. That's going to make things a lot easier later on. You will also need two batteries. Two AAAs can be cheap and nasty, they can be whatever you've got lying around the house. The most important component is the vibrating disc motor. These are the type of things that you will find in mobile phones. When your phone rings and vibrates, that's what this is. You will need two toothbrushes. You need to use new ones and they need to have a flat top. Old ones are unhygienic and probably won't be flat and the bristlebot won't perform as it's meant to. Also really cheap on eBay is googly eyes. I got this pack of 100 for about $2. Lastly we have some bling. These pipe cleaners with glitter are going to be excellent for adding legs and other structures on the bristlebot. You won't need too many tools but the most important one is a soldering iron. Any cheap one will do, we've only got two wires to solder. Vital component will be a hot glue gun or super glue if you don't have one of those. Lastly, if you've got it, some heat shrink. If you don't have that, normal electrical tape will do the job. Time to make our one and only electrical connection. You'll notice on your two electronics components that they both have a red and black wire for positive and negative. Get your soldering iron and some solder. Make sure it's got a clean tip. I would strongly recommend heating up each of the wires and then just getting a little bit of solder on the end of them. This is gonna make them join together a lot easier. Once you've done this for all four, if you've got heat shrink, time to cut two little tubes and slide them onto the long battery wires. If you forget to slide it on before you solder, you're gonna to need to unsolder or use something like electrical tape instead. Okay, time to solder our two wires. I'm gonna prop it up so I don't burn my table and put the soldering iron underneath. They should melt together at roughly the same time. If you don't have a soldering iron and you really want to make this, it would be possible to twist the ends of the two wires around each other, then put on a little bit of super glue to seal it and then electrical tape to keep them apart. Time to test our new connection. I'm going to make sure the switch is set to off. I'm going to make sure the two wires I've just soldered aren't touching so we don't short the battery. I'm going to open it up and put my two batteries in. Turn it over, turn it on, and you can see we have our vibrating disc motor working really well. Okay, time to use the heat shrink or electrical tape to insulate our wires. I'm going to slide the heat shrink down over our new join and then use the lighter to make it seal. The heat shrink or electrical tape will make it much stronger and stop any chance of the wires touching and shorting out the circuit. Time to get our two toothbrushes. You might notice other ones on YouTube only use one toothbrush. That's because they have a little coin cell battery and that can't be replaced without re-soldering and re-gluing everything. So we consider this a deluxe model and that's why we need two. What we simply need to do is to chop off the top. So I've got some nice side cutters here. You could use a saw, you could use big kitchen scissors. But one. and two, ready to go. Our next job is to place the motor and tidy up the wiring. We're going to pull the wiring as tight as we can, wrapping around, and then peel the sticker off and place the motor right in the middle of the battery pack. We're doing this on the side with the on off switch. Put a bit of hot glue there, move the cables where you want them and wait for it to dry. In this case, I'm putting it off to the side to leave the bottom flat for the toothbrush bristles. Once that starts to set, we're going to rotate around and do the other side, making sure that once again the wiring is kept to the side and the base is left open for the toothbrush heads. If we look at our piece, we can see we've done a good job here because the wires are off to the side 
and the motor is in the middle. Time to pour down our toothbrush heads. We're going to put a little bit of glue on the back of each one and then put them across either side of the motor. While the glue is still wet, you may wish to put it down and just apply a little bit of pressure. The aim here is to get the bristles even from front to back. After it's dry, you have the very exciting task of turning it on. So let's come underneath, flick the switch, put it down on the desk, and we can see that the motor vibrates. The bristles make it kind of levitate above the table. It's almost like a hovercraft the way this works. And you can poke it and sometimes it'll continue in a straight line, sometimes it'll go around in circles. It's a good idea to try it on glass. It works really, really well on that. Time for the fun bit. Let's start with the googly eyes. I've got two out of the packet and I'm going to place them on the battery cover with just a little bit of hot glue. The eyes are looking great. Time to add some legs. So what I've got is one of these sparkly sticks. I'm going to cut it roughly in half and then into thirds. I'm now going to turn my robot upside down so I can attach the legs on the bottom. Hot glue is once again our method of choice here. We're going to put a little dab down and then dip it in and wait for it to dry. The legs are on so now we're going to bend them into place. It's very important that they don't actually touch the ground. We want the bristles to be the part that touches the ground, otherwise we could ruin the movement from the vibration. So I'm going to very carefully bend them forward, up and then down at the knee joint, with it just above the table. Same for the middle leg. And then finally the rear legs. Alright, I'm going to use the second pink sparkly pipe cleaner to finish off the robot. First thing I'm going to do is cut about two centimeters off and I'm going to fold a little pink smiley face. Okay, to finish off, we're going to cut this one in half and we're going to use these two pieces to make some nice wings for the back. Once again, some more hot glue where we want to attach them. Because of the bend in the back, there's gonna be a little tension, so it's important to hold it until the glue starts to harden. It's probably one of the areas where you can go wrong as you're decorating. You wanna make sure you don't get any glue that clogs up the battery compartment. The other thing you need to get right is to make sure you don't put on anything too heavy, which is why we chose these pipe cleaners. The heavier it is, the more weight there'll be on the bristles and they'll bend instead of vibrating and having it dance across the table. So that's the bristle bot, a cool robot for under $10. Challenge yourself to come up with a great design and I'll see you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.